Hey everyone, it is great to be back. We are indeed continuing our devotional journey through the book of Jude. So what we would like to do is go back and just revisit that thought of building yourself up because it's so, so important. It's a very small book, but it has so much wisdom within it that we can relate to even today. Jude chapter one, the only chapter, the only chapter that you need, verses 20 and 21. NIV. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Amen. Just have a look at those verses again. But you, you, dear friends, dear friends, dear friends, all of you out there, Build yourselves up. Where? In the world? With your mates? No. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith. And how? By reading lots of books? By watching TV shows? By going to a club? No. By praying in the Holy Spirit. We talked about praying in tongues last week. Pray in the Holy Spirit. If you don't have that gift yet, keep asking. God, please, I would love to pray in tongues. I want to pray in the Holy Spirit. It says, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. The mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Christ died for us whilst we were still sinners. That's his merciful nature. His loving, caring, compassionate, merciful side. He broke his body to make us whole. He shed his blood to cleanse us of our sin and heal us. The mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring us to eternal life. When you confess with your tongue and lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour of your life and that he died and rose again from the dead, you will be saved. So you have eternal life in heaven. That's your inheritance. That's your guarantee. Jesus does not go back on his word. The mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ brings you to eternal life. Do you see those two verses alone are just so, so powerful? There's so much wisdom in there, so much guidance just right there. This is why we are working through the book of Jude, because it's so amazing. Now, are you stuck? Have you ever been stuck? I think we've all had times where we've been stuck. Stuck in a rut. Stuck in a difficult situation. Stuck in our minds sometimes and we just can't get out. Stuck in a very difficult place. And there seems to be no escape. No light at the end of the tunnel. However, when it comes to faith, we should not and do not just stay stuck. We either gain momentum. We carry on. We move forward, which is hypertrophy. We grow our faith muscles getting stronger or we backslide we go backwards we decline that's atrophy our faith muscles they start to weaken we go forward or we go backwards we don't stay stuck now there's a pastor in a place called brooklyn tabernacle his name's jim simbala and he once said either moving forwards in our faith or backwards there's actually no holding ground. No holding ground. No staying stuck. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 NIV says, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Amen to that. They are in conflict, one's pulling you one way, one's pulling you the other way. It's not stuck in the middle, one way or the other. And we know one way, Jesus. That way, not so much. The danger is this, if you stay stuck, if you do get into that situation where you're stuck, you will become stagnant. Now here's a little explanation of what stagnant water is. Stagnant water, with no movement or aeration, 
stagnant water becomes a prime breeding ground for biofilms or a collection of bacteria or fungi. I have been known to be a fungi. Moving on. Left untreated, stagnant water often becomes home for dangerous diseases and pathogens. How does that relate to today's message? You don't want to become stagnant, do you? You certainly don't want to become a breeding ground for dangerous diseases and pathogens. That doesn't sound particularly nice, does it? It won't be nice for you, and it's not nice for those around you either. Stagnancy is a breeding ground for that spiritual disease, sin. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We were sinners. We were born sinners. That's why Christ died for us. The remedy to get out of being stuck is by building yourselves up. We need to build ourselves up. We don't want to settle into that stagnation. We want to become like a river of living water. Living water, how beautiful that concept is. Jesus Christ, our living water. John chapter 7 verse 38 NIV says, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Amen. Rivers of living water. That's what we want in our lives and through our lives. In and through. In and through. Living water flowing. This is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit flowing from your life. That same spirit that's residing in you is the spirit that rose Christ from the dead. Now you want that flowing from your life. This is why we don't pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us partway. We don't just pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us to the top. We pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us to the overflow so that we have a great impact around us. Whoever we meet, whoever we talk to, whoever we see, we want to be walking, talking, living sacrifices for Jesus Christ. We want to be examples of Jesus in this world today. We want the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit flowing through us all the time. If we stay stuck and we drift into the stagnant zone, the comfort zone, then we've got no chance of repelling the deception that Jude warns of. We won't be able to spiritually discern those wolves in sheep's clothing. We won't be able to recognize the false teachers that are spreading heresies and trying to lead us astray. The thieves that Jesus warns us of that steal, kill and destroy. False teachers doing the enemy's work. We won't be able to recognize that deception. And we won't be able to avoid the cultural decline of moral standards. So we must build ourselves up each and every day. In this small book, there is so much power. There is so much wisdom, and this is why we are reiterating it, and that's why we've got so much amazing content out of it. And if you've missed any of the devotions, you can go back to youtube.com forward slash Audacious Church and watch them all there. If you missed recent sermon content, you can also find that on the YouTube channel. But what you can also do is go to audaciouschurch.com forward slash devotionals and you can sign up right there. There's written versions as well as the video versions. And you can fill yourself up and build yourselves up each and every day with the amazing content that's provided there. We look forward to seeing you again. We have even more fantastic content coming later in the week. So do stay tuned. Have a great rest of your day, dear friends. And I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.